That's not too bad. Better. Oh, I like that one. Uh, Dad? What are you doing? Oh, hi, Catherine. I was just playing around with some of the transition effects. What do you think of this? Um, a little busy. Busy? Busy? These are awesome. I mean, how can you not crave something like this in your podcast? What I'm really craving right now is a tranquilizer gun. Why? Are you having problems sleeping? It's not for me. Um... Moving along. Today we're going to be do, doing a little coffee filter chromatography. Chromatography is actually a collection of techniques for separating mixtures. It comes from the Greek words for chroma, meaning color, and graphene, meaning to write. So we're going to be writing colors? Coloring? In a manner of speaking, yes, we'll actually be separating color more than laying it down. Here's our equipment. A good sized tray, a coffee filter, a paper clip, a couple of water soluble markers, and even though it's not shown here, some water. Enough to fill the tray with a with a depth to a depth of about a quarter of an inch. First we folded the coffee filter in half, then built it, bent it around itself to form a cone. Next we held the cone in place with a paper clip. Then we colored two spots up near the bottom of the cone one with the green marker and the second with the black one. Then we added water to the pan and placed the coffee filter in the water. Catherine, what do you think will happen next? Well, let's consider the possibilities. Perhaps the water won't do anything to the coffee filter or the ink. The water will soak into the coffee filter, but it won't move the level of the water. The water will actually soak the filter and get drawn upwards. Well, I think that, that about covers it. Let's see what really happened. Almost immediately, the water climbed up the coffee filter, and it went well past the level of the water in the tray. In fact, it ran right to the top of the filter. In addition, the water took the ink with it. Not only did we see the ink get dragged up with the filter with the water, but some blue ink separated out from the green. Why did that happen? The secret is capillary action. Water gets sucked up the coffee filter in much in the same way that it was pulled up the tubes in the celery last week. When it passes the ink, it pulls that up with it. But where did the blue come from? Well, green ink isn't just one chemical, it's a mixture. When the water travels up the filter and takes the ink with it, the component parts of the ink are separated because some of the molecules are larger than others. The difference in size means they will travel at different rates up the filter and then separate out. I wonder if we increase the height of the coffee filter, if the separation of the blue from the green would become more obvious. I wonder that if we used a different liquid, like rubbing alcohol, if it would travel as far up the filter as the water did, or if it would be better or worse at separating the ink out. Actually, to take that one step further, does your choice of liquid make a difference to the mixture that you're trying to separate? We used water-soluble ink markers, but if we had used ink from permanent markers or whiteboard markers, would the water have been able to separate it just as well, or at all? Or could we have only gotten it to separate using something else, like the rubbing alcohol? Man, chromatography can be an absorbing topic, can't it? Oh, <laughs> now that was awesome. Hey, and for even more awesome, check out this transition. Ow! That one actually hurt my head, Dad. Oh, sorry.